Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Fancy Princess, SoundCloud, SoundClick. Some of this, this video is going to rub a lot of white and black people the wrong way. It's called use a nigga too. I don't like to use the word nigga, but this is a derogatory word that pretty much demeans African Americans. And I'm pointing this video at a lot of black people who who think they are not black. So I can reflate. Re now, when I say use a nigga too, I'm not, I'm not talking about like, I'm not using that to say every black person is a nigga to black people. I'm saying that the upper echelon, the upper echelon white percentage and some black people consider every person of shade a nigga. Now, and and they also and and if you're not of shade and you're a poor white person, they consider you trash. Now, if you if you haven't heard those two terms, you've been living under a rock because they will call a person who's white and has no money white trash. And even if you have money and have new money, they'll still call you trash because you're not sophisticated like them or from old money or so on and so forth. They either call you trash or they're gonna call you a nigga. So use a nigga too. Now. Now, uh, and, and snooty black people will call you that in a minute. Trust me. Trust me. Roll up into one of these jobs and let a, let a bunch of those women there who had them jobs for a while and see if them women won't call you. They'll, be, they'll consider you a nigga and get you fired. They'll do that. They'll sigh with a white boss in a heartbeat. Know this. They'll do that. But some of you black women who are like, I'm Dominican, I'm Indian, um, I'm whatever mixed with Cherokee, so on and so forth. You know what? That's all fine and good. There are a lot of mixed races out there. But what I'm talking about is the way the government classifies you. That's what I'm talking about. The way they separate us. So what you think and how the government thinks is two different uh, ways of thought. And if you don't believe me, you need to pull up some information. There are dossiers about what they consider black people to be. And even black people have a, uh, well, at least they had, uh, let me go, let me go back. Let me change my train of thought here and just go back for a minute. I went to an all black college when I started off. I was 27 and 48 now. I went to an all black college called Talladega University. It's still there. And when I went to Talladega University, you'll go into the library and there's murals of paintings on the wall of the story Amstad, how the slaves took over the ships and started killing all the white people, so on and so forth. And they did this to make it a historical place. As a matter of fact, Talladega gets subsidies from the government because it is a historical college. Why? Because it was built with the hands of slaves. You don't understand that you need to go back and look at it when I mean don't understand like don't believe or have questions about that go back and look at it and it's it it's all right there on the internet you can look at the history of Talladega University however we know that these slaves that are for one painted on the arm stock were very dark skin they were they weren't light skin we also know that a lot of people come from the Ivory Coast were of darker skin people we know this we know the West Africans were dark-skinned people. We do know this. But here's the thing. when Tal What Talladega used to do and a lot of other HBCUs is what they would do is they would have the brown paper bag uh, pretty much contest, I guess, or judgment. And they would pretty much say, if you are not lighter than this brown paper bag, then you can't come to our university. And they still treat uh, dark-skinned people with some adverse effect. Trust me, they do. They do. And they used to do this to dark-skinned people, the same people who built the damn college. You, mm. The same people who built the college. Why? Because the white man rules. And they thought that it would have them, like, their, I, I guess, give them, a, their children, a better chance of... Of, of actually getting the job, but but in, in but what's really crazy is you were, they were holding down their own people on purpose, purposely doing this. So, uh, 
for those of you who say that I'm, you know, this, that, and the other, if you were, even to some black people, if you were darker than a a, a paper bag, guess what? You was a nigga too. <laughs> they wouldn't care. If you rolled up on it talking about I'm, I'm some Dominican or I'm West Indian or what, you was a nigga. You was a nigga to them. You are. And still, some of these jobs that you want to get so bad and want to fit into, some of you, like some, a lot of these jobs have opened up because we have been butting heads with white people for so long and now they have to be diverse. But they only have to be diverse to an extent of numbers. You got to understand what diversity is. Diversity is not a free pass to get into a good job, even if you're educated to the teeth. It, that doesn't matter. Diversity is a numbers game. That's what it is. If a job has so many people that, uh, let's just say a job, and I'm just speculating because I don't know the rules of all diversity, but I know it's a number thing. So let's say you have 100 people that work at your um, office. For your company period, you have 100 people. Well, so many of those people have to be women. That's why you see a lot of women on, on construction and now, and they getting down, they driving trucks, they, they doing it. And I'm all for that. I'm glad to see that. Do your thing, you know, uh, get some white, black women out there, Indian. I don't care about that. I don't care if a woman is my boss, just be a good ass boss. Don't be a terrible boss, but you know, <laughs> which was a good movie, but nonetheless, uh, so they have, so that's what diversity is. You, you got women out there, you got, uh, now even the gays, they've broken ground, you know, and, and, and I guess you have to have some people there who, you don't have to have people there who are gay, but you can't say, you can't discriminate against them because of their sexual preference, which is understood. And then you have, but, but that's brand new. That's brand new. That 10 years ago, it wasn't like that. But And then you have, of course, the African-Americans and um, Latinos who are pouring into the country and Indian. And the Indian people. You got the Somalians who are outnumbering people three to one. I mean, there is, it's just crazy. But all of these darker tone people are pouring into the country. So, but but still, according to the government, according to the numbers... Go ahead and say it for me. Use a nigga too. Uh, people from, uh, they're coming in from Iraq, Iran, uh, so-called Middle Eastern, and they don't call themselves Middle Eastern. You know, uh, Middle Eastern countries, uh, people who are coming in um, from Israel, people who, guess what? Guess what, you people? Guess what? Why don't y'all go ahead and say it for me? Let me hear you. That's right. Use the nigga too. Even the Asian people. And the only reason why they're not coming down against Asian people right now, you notice how no Asian people have gotten shot and killed? Even if you have an Asian with you, they are slow to kill somebody who are who is Asian. And I'm a, and it's true to, and this is true to form. I had a friend, and she had and she has a baby by an Asian, so the baby's mixed. And her and her child were in the car, and it's a young child too. Were in the car. Police stopped them, started talking to her, saw her baby, woke up the baby, woke the baby up to talk to the baby, wanted to see how Asian that baby was, and then rolled out. Didn't even give her a ticket or nothing. How many Asians have been killed by the police within the last what? Five, four or five years. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'm listening. I'm going to tell you publicly. I'm going to tell you two. And that's because they killed people first. And one of them was a Virginia Tech dude. That's because they killed people first. Now, you go over there to China, they're killing people all day long. But over here, the police will not go up against Asian people. They just won't do it. They won't do the freeze and shoot and then ask questions. They won't do it. But there was a time where they hated people who were all from Asia. And guess what they considered you? Come on, Asian people. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> Let me hear you say it. What did they? You was a nigga too. <laughs> yes, they did. And uh, they also, I mean, Aborigines, Australia, uh, those were the Aborigine Indians, dark-skinned people, what they consider them. 
niggas. Uh, the people in India, I mean, they, they, they just stopped occupying your country not even 40 years ago. That's still in this lifetime. And guess what they considered all the in, uh, all the people from India over there? <laughs> what they can send to you? Niggas. You was a nigga too. Yeah. I mean, I know you own owning corner stores over here. I know you have to, a lot of you are doctors. A lot of you are educated. Most of you are very peaceful. But you don't like black people. <laughs> you don't like black people. You don't like black people because the white people don't like black people. Same reason why Asians don't like, uh, a lot of Asians don't like uh, uh, black people. Although there are black and Asians who are mixing uh, now and having children. So there's, that's a whole uh, 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 another thing, a lot of interracial. But my, I, I don't really see people from India and black people mixing together. They really don't like us too much. I haven't seen that. But you know, you go into a corner store and there's a dude from India owns a corner store. Straight out of, uh, you know, Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or, you know, wherever they're from, you know, and you're just, uh, you're just like, wow, like no black people own any of the corner stores anymore. Or dudes from, you know, the Middle Eastern countries or the Asians. There are no black people own the corner stores anymore. None. And you know what? They make money off of us, off of the poor people who live in in our, you know, in our little sex. They set up on purpose and feed us whatever they whatever that they think that we like. And we go in there and buy this stuff and we think nothing of the fact that we are being exploited. And they don't even like us. And they think what the other countries think. Use a nigga too. So for all you ladies running around talking about you not black, guess what you are? You may not be black to you. You may not be black to uh, you know whatever country you decide to say that your your parents, grandparents, or your great 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 grandparents from. Look, that's all fine and well. If that's what you claim, I have. I'm not gonna come against that. But you live in America. <laughs> you live here. <laughs> and in this country, go ahead. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> That's right. Use the nigga too. And uh, you know, for all you sisters who are, you know, running around with white dudes, um, you know, that's all fine. Y'all got, you know, kids that are mixed. That happens, you know, it was bound to happen. I've been happening. That's all uh, cool and everything. But, you know, when you're not with your husband, you still get stopped by the police because they don't know a white dude is your husband. You still get harassed by the police because I know some women who are married to white dudes and they still get harassed by the police and they're chocolate sisters. They still get harassed by the police. You know why? You know why, ladies? <laughs> ladies that are married to the white dudes. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. <laughs> yes, say it. Say it for me. <laughs> That's right. Use a nigga too. You can run up into Worthington. You can run out there to into uh in the in the in the whatever place you you decide that you know you want to be all posh and whatnot because you make a little sixty seventy thousand dollars and but you still like you still like Negroes. You still want to come and hang out with the Negroes whenever you feel black. But when it gets too black. <laughs> But when it gets too black, I love it because because when it gets too black, then you want to come and then you want to go hang out, you know, with your husband's folks. When it gets too black, it's like, oh, it's too many shades of Negro up in this mug. You can't do, you know, you know what I'm saying? You want to come down here and you want to date us, but you want to be married to a white dude. Guess what? He was a nigga too. You even, you, 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 I mean, you trying to hide what you really are. Just go ahead and marry a black man and be all the way black. With your hair, you know, listening to the music. We, I mean, just don't come down to the black clubs. Just stay up there with the white clubs if you're going to be white. If you're going to be black, be black. So for you people who are running around talking about you ain't black, you live in America. The government makes the rules, not you. And you can try to get as far away from us as you can. But you cannot get a, you can't get away from your blood. You can't. You can you you not gonna erase your you you can try to perm your hair out. It's still nappy up under there. Hey, go get some of that yaki. 
Go pay somebody three hundred dollars to the uh and, and, and to the Asian people who are making all the money off of you. Go ahead and do that. Go get some nails. Go get some Revlon. Go get some Lee Press on. Go get some of those. Go <laughs> go ahead. Put some Mac on. Mm hmm. I'll be watching y'all videos. That's how I learn this stuff. Look at this person. Just fooling themselves. You see my hair? That's what your hair looks like. It's black. It's nappy. It is what it is. You see my skin? It's black. Coated by the sun. I'm 48 years old and I don't have not one gray hair. I'll be 50 in a few months. Like three. I don't have a gray hair on me. <laughs> you got people who look 30 uh, and, and they got gray hair all over them. You know what I'm saying? Look at my skin. You see any wrinkles on me? You see a bunch of wrinkles on my face? No. No, you don't. So you can deny what you are all you want to. All you want to. But I know what I am. And I know I'm powered by the sun, both of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going I'm not going to disclaim my blackness and my dark skin. And I used to be on that like everybody else used to be whitewashed, foolish in my thinking. But I am what I am. And I I'm going to live this way and I'm going to die this way. And I'm going to own it until it is. That doesn't mean I got to be foolish. It doesn't mean I got to be uneducated. That doesn't mean I got to be unemployed. All it means is that I am a black person. That's what I am. I'm not going to run away from it. It is what it is. I got scars uh, internally, externally. I got, you know, I done been beat up by the cops. I done been beat up by my own kind. They beat me up every time I step outside. My next door neighbor don't even like me. She's as black as I am. For what? I've never done nothing to that woman. But I'm black. You want to be scared of me, Trick? Be scared of me. I could care less about you and the rest of the other women in this world. I'm black. If you don't like it, then go to another world. Go to another country. I don't care. I don't care less what you do. Because in my eyes, go ahead and say it for me. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. Ak. Ak. Go ahead and say it for me, Ak. What color is your dog, Ak? What color is the dog? <laughs> Ak. Ak. Go ahead and say it for me. All right. Forget it. For the rest of you, in my eyes, Use a nigga too.